Hey there, I hope you're doing super mega well. I saw this thing on the articulate forums about a video that plays out and the user must click with their mouse or press a key when they notice a potential problem in the video. And then they have to identify these 10 mistakes and the activity needs to be able to record how many hazards the user gets correct and show the feedback at the end. So I want to tackle this so you can see my approach. There's many ways you can achieve this, but let's see what I would do. So I downloaded this video. It's not really a safety hazard, I guess. I mean, it's, it is driving, so you know, it could go wrong. But uh, we have a, this moving video. I wanted something more dynamic than like just a person typing there. So we will try to push, put some hotspots or something on the screen and we'll try to track the correct answers. We'll do three, we don't have time for 10. Who has time? So here's the video and I created a rectangle here. It's, it has a fill of whatever color and 100% transparency, you know? So you can click on it, but you cannot see it because that's the whole point. So let's just, let's just preview this to address something else also. So we have the video and I can click here on the building and the video pauses, which, you know, breaks the whole illusion of this thing. So we have to address this. When, we're, when you're working with videos in Storyline, they want to be paused on click. So you can deal with that with a simple um, hotspot that we will insert now. So we'll put a hotspot over it like that, like nice edge to edge and put it like that over the video. Now, hotspots are great because uh, the default behavior for the hotspot is they will show the hand cursor on hover. Now, unfortunately, when I was preparing for this video, I stumbled upon a bug where this feature just doesn't work. I don't know, in this version or whatever version, this, it doesn't work, so there's no hand cursor. We want the hand cursor because we want, we don't want the user to guess where to click when the mouse cursor changes, you know, so you want the hand cursor to be there like all the time. So there is this little trick we can do first, you know, to, to, to fix this bug we've stumbled on. We can create a trigger with a show layer and we don't select the layer. That's the secret here. When user clicks on the hotspot and we press OK. So basically we created a trigger that's invalid, but the trigger still works because now we have the hand cursor and you can click on the hotspot and something should happen, but it doesn't because the trigger is invalid. So, you know, <laughs> stumbling block number one, check. Okay, now let's go to our, pr our initial problem here. So our rectangle is here and I created an extra state. It's called visited state because we want, after the user clicks, we want some sort of feedback that they got it correct. So that's my visited state. I basically just duplicated the normal state, added this check mark icon here. And visited state is great because once it changes to visited, it can't go back to normal or something like that, like, like selected state. That's why I went with visited. So the next thing is when it changes to visited, we want to track this. So we do that simply by creating another trigger We'll say uh, adjust variable, mistake zero one, to value true. When we could say when user clicks on the rectangle, or we could say when change uh, when state changes to visited. Both approaches are fine. Um, let's go with click, you know, rectangle one, and let's just rename it to mistake zero one, so it nicely matches with the whole variable thing we have going on. So we have when user clicks mistake zero one, we're gonna change this variable to true. And what's great about true false variables, again, you can only change this to true once. If this thing repeats, if user clicks 100,000 times on this object, it will, the variable will still be true. So that's great. So this is us tracking this particular hotspot here or this particular mistake. So let's also count that to our total score. So let's create one more trigger. 
it is a just variable and I have another number variable here number val number variable here called total score and we're gonna add one to total score when now for some reason I don't want to say when user clicks you know because you don't know what's gonna happen with this maybe you're gonna change the, maybe you're gonna change how this interaction works so you still want to track this even if something else is gonna trigger the true false thing so that's where we're gonna go with when variable changes mistake zero one you know so whatever our mechanism for changing the true false to true is our mistake one to true is doesn't matter we don't care about that we're gonna add one to total score when this variable changes and because it goes only to true it is it changes only once which means we will add value one just once okay so we're almost at the end of our trick here we're gonna add value one to total score when mistake one changes and that's when uh, this goes to true and in our case here, I set it, I set it for, I think it's like two seconds, from two to four. You know, when you're working with the interactions like this, you probably want a bit of space. So user A has the time to click on this thing. And B, maybe, you know, Storyline doesn't really load videos that super fast. And maybe the timeline like really starts at one second because the video loaded a bit later. So you don't want to miss this window when user has to click on the item. So that's why I went with, with two seconds here. From two to four, and I think there's like, yeah, this yellow, uh, this yellow sign here. Let's add two more just to, you know, finish our, our experiment here. I'm just gonna remove the hotspot so we can get a better view and let's go forward. And you, we, we want the users to click on the, just waiting for this to refresh the view. Okay, we want this bus. Okay, so let me paste it here. So something like that. So, you know, we're gonna catch the bus in this window here. Yeah, that may be a bit forward like that. And we need to fix our, um, ver uh, our trigger here. This is mistake number two to value true and maybe also change this so it's lovely and nice. And let's do one more. Let's just scrub forward. Okay, maybe we're gonna click on this bike here. Move it down. Okay, just let's see. Oh yeah, that, that. Oh, that they're passing us. Okay, so they're quite fast. So maybe like that. Yeah, we, we still got it. I think that's fine, maybe. That should do. So, which means we need, we need to fix one more trigger. Mistake number three to value true. Let's rename this so it's nice and lovely. Bam. And we need to add two more triggers, you know, so we're gonna add value one to total score when mistake two changes and just one more copy paste when mistake three changes, you know, so we're adding three times. So if we're super smart, we should get total score of three. Now we're gonna jump to the next slide we're gonna, we're gonna, where we are going to display this score. So it's, uh, we, we can just say like score and total score. Just like that, just for, for our video here, this is more than enough. Uh, let me just double check double, total score, yeah. And when timeline ends, actually, Actually, when working with videos, I prefer this method. I wanna jump to slide, next slide. Not when timeline ends, because, you know, maybe the video loaded a bit later. When media completes video two, yeah. Okay, let's, let's try. Can, can we get a total score of three? Yeah, that should be one. Okay, here's the bus. And click, yay, two. Okay, where's the bike? We got the bike, three. Let's just wait till the video ends. I think I'm gonna fast forward this one. Yep, 
Yeah, score three. Amazing, we are so good. Anyway, that's my approach. Uh, also, I think, you know, using the true false variables, you have more details that you are able to track, you know, for each question, if user got it wrong or correct, or you can just track the total score, like in this case here. Anyway, hope this was useful. Take care, and I'll talk to you in the next one.